Hi everybody, my name is Aurora Crooks and I am with New York City Audubon and today I am going to be talking to you guys a little bit about birds and bird classification. So we see birds every day. So we see birds flying in the sky, we see them nesting in branches and in trees, and we even see them walking on the same streets as us. But what classifies a bird as a bird? So today I'm going to be talking to you guys a little bit about bird anatomy and bird classification and how scientists figure out when they see a fossil or if they see a new species, how they're going to classify a bird. All birds are classified as members of the kingdom Animalia, which means the animal kingdom. They're part of the phylum Chordata and the class Aves. And remembering their class as Aves is really important because Aves also goes into avian, which is how people remember the word bird, avian. It's vitally important for scientists to have these classifications when they're discovering new species or when they're researching and putting out papers on different types of birds. This general grouping kind of emphasizes that birds are related through a variety of different characteristics. So some of these classifications are vertebrates. So all birds have a backbone, which places them under the phylum or category chordata. Unlike most other vertebrates, birds have a light skeletal structure, which means that their bones are actually filled with hollows, gaps, and air sacs so that they can remain lightweight. Most importantly for flying, but remaining lightweight is super important for a bird's body for not only their flight, but also to be able to dodge a predator really quickly or just for general movement purposes. So one thing to remember about birds is that they have a vertebrae and that they are extremely lightweight due to having air sacs in their bones. One other way that we classify birds is by feathers. Who could forget feathers? So all birds are evolved to have feathers and feathers are made of something called keratin. And if you don't know what keratin is, it's something that's in the structure of your hair and it's also in the structure of your fingernail to give it kind of a shape and a body structure. And bird feathers also have light reflecting pigments and they also serve as body insulation. Now the size and the shape of the feather really depends on the species as well as what they use that specific feather for. Feathers can be ornamental, they can be crests, they can be streamers, and other feathers kind of help birds control their flight or for how long they're flying, while some feathers just act as down to keep them warm for insulating. And in the case of birds like penguins or other seabirds, oftentimes their feathers will serve as a way to make them move faster while in the water or swimming. We have to classify birds are by their wings, and you can kind of see their wings in this little skeletal that, skeleton that I have right here kind of resembles a dinosaur fossil and if it resembles a dinosaur fossil that is because birds are the class aves happens to be some of the closest living relatives of our dinosaurs most notably the chicken is the closest living relative to the t-rex and you can kind of tell by their little wing shapes but going on to wings even flightless birds have wings or adapted wings or flippers that may be used for swimming and so wings aren't always for flight. Sometimes they're for threats, sometimes they're for, for protection, sometimes they're for certain dances or displays that they're doing to communicate. The size and shape of the wings is depends really on the species and like how the bird is using those wings for movement. And the markings are useful to identify the species on their wings. One classification that all birds share is their bill or their beak. And you can kind of see your bill, the bill or the beak right here. So all birds are always going to have a bony keratin structure and keratin, like I said before, is kind of the same structure and stuff made out of your fingernails or your hair. And they are always going to have a bill made of that kind of material forming on their mouth. This bill or this beak is frequently evolved to have specific qualities depending on the species to help their survival. And it's always pretty much based on their diet. You might notice that some specific species of birds have very, very long beaks that are kind of like chopstick looking almost, and that's usually birds who eat stuff like seeds. And then some birds have extremely sharp beaks to tear apart meat or to catch prey. There's also beaks that are used that are like very U-shaped that are used to just scoop up water and drink up fish. And so it really depends on the species, but more often than not, their bill or their beak's gonna be depending on their diet that the species is eating. Some birds even use their bills as weapons or to help regulate their body temperature. But one thing to remember is that all birds are always going to have this little beak formation. It may vary in size or shape or color, but they will always have one. Another important feature to remember about avians or birds 
is that they are always going to be warm-blooded. And if you don't know what warm-blooded is, reptiles are cold-blooded, which means that reptiles determine their temperature based on the environment around them. Uh, warm-blooded creatures are the opposite, which means that they regulate their own body temperature regardless of the environment around them. So that, that requires, what we call that is endothermic. So all birds are going to be endothermic, which means that they generate their own internal body heat and don't rely on the environment to maintain their body temperature. And this is an important classification to know because it's important to know that they produce their own heat, which comes into another section when it comes to their eggs or raising young. Heat, a source of heat is vitally important so that they can maintain their diet and their body temperature and ha help hatch their eggs and their young. Another important classification for birds is eggs and egg laying. So all birds are going to be laying amniotic eggs as a part of their reproductive cycle. These eggs help, always have a hard shell and they always require incubation, which means parents putting their body heat and keeping the eggs close to them as part of the development until they hatch. Egg size, shape, markings, the number of eggs that are going to be produced is going to be dependent on the species of the bird, but always remember that all birds are going to be having these hard-shelled eggs that they keep and they incubate until the bird can hatch, and then from there, from hatching, they will be taken care of until they can be on their own. But birds are always going to lay eggs. Another important thing is communication. Birds are highly developed communicative creatures. Uh, they have a complex social skills, and many birds communicate vocally through very elaborate songs and calls, and that is kind of the way they facilitate their social structure and courtships. And these are really important because extensive communication is a vital part of birds and bird classification so that we can know not only the different species and types of calls and figure out which species that is, but it's also an important classification for aves in general because birds communicate as a part of their territorial defenses, parent chick recognition, or even like community cooperation. So communicating and bird songs and calls are very important and a very unique classification for A's. And so while you guys, now that you guys know some of the classifications, I just wanted to say birds have these similar classifications, but all birds are extremely unique and have these distinct features that make them unique for their species. So while aves all share these general classifications, there's 10,000 species of birds who's out there that are all distinct in their own social behaviors, in their feathers, in their beaks, and in their calls. So that's my episode today. And next episode, I'm going to be focusing a little bit more about plumes, plumage, and social behavior of birds.